Recording in progress. Hi, everyone. I'm Eman Pangan, and uh, this is my color mapping activity. And th uh, this is my space as a practice project. It's a color mapping activity. I call it Pintados, Coloring the Price of Inequality. So let me tell you about uh, a background of it. So at the beginning of this project, uh, initially I've chosen memories as a tool for guiding a person's walk through an environment. The question that goes into my head that prompts me to do this project is, what if one day I lost all my memories? We try to make sense of our world and everything becomes memories. And every day of our lives, we leave traces of ourselves in the spaces we walk through and turn those spaces into personal places by creating memories. So in trying to do that, I got inspired by the project Queering the Map, a platform that empowers the queer community in, by sharing their live experiences. It functions as a living archive of queer life. I realized the possibilities of fighting inequality by exposing the spaces and documenting changes or evolution of spaces so my initial project, Mapping Wesleyan, is a platform for sharing personal memories to participate in writing our shared university history by posting photos, videos, or anything that illustrates or tells their experience. So doing this, I think I'll empower everyone to tell their individual stories by linking each personal memory to the collective history of the university also, it's a way of documenting the spatial development of the place, exploring how each space in the university becomes a special place for peoples, and most importantly, exhume inequalities experienced by each community member. Yet, along the process of developing it, Becca and Naho, during our visit in the UK, let us design a sample touring activity by giving us tasks from their book, How to Explore the World, by Kerry Smith. My group is and I designed the activity getting to know the neighborhood through mindful listening. So we use our sense of hearing to examine the present and past of Chipley Road to Goldsmiths University of London. It's a new experience for us. And upon getting the feedback on improving our spaces activities, I realized there is so much more than simply recalling a memory of a place and then posing it on Padlet. I was reminded of how the environment becomes part of the learning context, how it shapes the achievement of learning outcomes. So I have abandoned my previous concept mapping Wesleyan, but remaining true to my purpose of exposing our hidden biases or learned inequalities, I think I have a more precise way uh, to, of doing this than mapping Western activity. I want to make something that involves physical mo mobility. It's literally touring and moving around. Space exploration is not connected with NASA or any space agency. And the personal aha moments of participants. So I come up with Pintados coloring the price of inequality. So this project is inspired by a Filipino classic Fiesta game, literally named color game, where people would bet on a color and wait for the game master to roll the color dice. If the dice matches your color, you win and your bet will be double. If not, you lose. So what if the colors we bet on are actually our way of seeing the world? I mean, what if they are biases, our colored program biases? Does each color have a prize? Is there any hierarchy of colors that sources out in society? So the project named Pintados is a Filipino pre-colonial art of body painting where each tattoo has a meaning that usually represents victory in war or something that reflects an individual's persona. Now, Pintados is associated with a cultural religious celebration in honor of Senor Santo Nino. So what if our daily way of body painting is to wear what we like. What does each color that we wear say on our social status or our uh, social classes and taste? What does each color reveal on our persona? To start the uh, spaces activity, Pintados, 
we need to go to any shopping mall or marketplace, then the participants need to choose any color they like or maybe their favorite color. Next is they must collect 12 objects with a touch of that color. They can draw them, take photos of them, or even purchase them. So when collecting the objects, the participants must describe the items like sizes, function, quality, materials, uh, place of production, maker, etc. But most importantly, what they must do is to put the prices alongside the objects. And then afterwards, they must reflect on the question, what does your color mapping activity says about you, about your preferences? So... Initially, I contacted six people to participate in this. Well, in the photo, it's my sister and her friends, office mates. Their exploration went over for four hours. So they have explored two shopping malls and they have reported that they enjoyed the activity. In fact, her friend is trying to find a red toilet. Her friend asked himself why most toilets are white. Why, why is it the white color is the default? color for toilets. So uh, is these are their, uh, the objects that they, they've uh, gathered for the red one. This is for the black one. This is for the blue color. And this is for the orange. And we also have green. Okay. Uh, but the group failed to process the activity since they only sent the photos of the items they chose. And all of them took photos of the objects. No one draws or even purchased the item. So I have followed up by sending a set of process questions that can help them realize something from the activity. So the questions were, uh, for example, if you add up the price of your items, what can you infer about it? If you added up the price of your items, and compare, compared it to your peers, what does it say about you and your groupmates? What's the most dominant function of the items? Where did you get most of the items? Most of your items are made of what material? Most of your items were made from where? Did you draw your items? What do you think about your drawing? Do you take photos of your items? What do you think about your camera angle or filter you use? Did you purchase your items? How does it feel buying the real thing? What is the size of most of your items? What do you think is the quality of most of your items? What's the price range of most of your items? And I even uh, put questions, uh, uh, deeper questions, like how do you think the color you choose describes you now, your social status? Can we say that a hierarchy of colors sorts us out in society? What do the color and items says about your social class and taste? What does the color reveal on your persona? So overall, what does your color mapping activity says about you, about your preferences? After sending that, only one replied to me, and that was not my sister, but her friend who chatted and said, participating in the color mapping activity is a new and fun experience for me because of the rule of only picking items with a particular color. Being black, in my case, my favorite color, I had always preferred choosing items with this color because of its simplicity and inconspicuous nature. The items I pick vary in prices and usage, from shoes and clothes to the cup holder and toys, which are meaningful and nostalgic to me. Looking at the pictures I took, I noticed how I changed my preferences, but still had my childish side remain. So because of that, I have decided to conduct a second experimentation and I have contacted my former students this time to help me. But since they all have personal engagements, only two volunteered. Uh, at the center is Ivan and at the right side is David. So I invited them for lunch at Jollibee and briefed them on what will happen. Afterwards, we started a color mapping activity and it took them 40 minutes to finish the activity. One took photos of the items and the other one draw it, but took only notes because he suddenly changed his mind. So these are the places that uh, they visited. 
the Japan Home Center, the supermarket, Miniso, Watson's, the pharmacy, uh, department store, and uh, Mr. DIY. So here is uh, David who took photos of the items at Miniso. And here is Ivan who took, uh, who jot down notes of the green objects. So David chose the blue object. So I call him the blue guy. And Ivan picked the green objects. So I called him the green guy. So, uh, but Ivan, instead of drawing it, he downloaded pictures of the items and, on the internet. So after, after that, we went back to school to process the activity. So uh, initially, I began by asking them their thoughts on what we did. Then little by little, I acted as a facilitator by asking the prompt questions I wrote after the first experiment. What's so interesting is they have realized that if they do this with their friends or a much larger group, they think it would take them hours and hours to finish since they would tease each other during the activity. They, all, they have also realized that they have selected attention to particular things. One is more of nature related things and the other is more on storage slash home essentials. When I asked them to add up their, the, the prices of their items, the one who chose blue or the storage slash home essentials guy calculated 1,851 pesos and the one who chose green or the nature related things guy summed up 974 pesos. I asked them what they could infer about it. At first, they both laughed and said that the blue guy was more affluent than the green guy. So upon inquiring about their family network with consent, obviously, uh, and I need to, it turned out that the blue guy's family income ranges from 45,000 to 50,000 per month. And the green guy's estimated uh, uh, monthly income is around 15,000 per month. So uh, these are the objects which the blue guy took. And upon inquiring deeper on how they, uh, on how they choose the items, the blue guy focuses more on the aesthetics while the green guy looks more on the prices. They have different buying habits. The blue guy looks first at the brand, then the item, if it's aesthetically appealing, and then the price. The green guy looks first at the thing, then tries to find the one with the lowest price, the floor price. So to dig more into this difference, I asked them about the common function of the chosen items, of their chosen items. And the blue guy said that he's more on storage in contrast with the green guy, which is more on food. So the blue guy inferred that maybe because blue is related to plastics. And so he found more blue items that function as storage. In comparison, the green guy reasoned that since green is associated with living things or anything that sustains life, Many of these items are either recyclable or edible and made from much cheaper eco-friendly materials. So to sum up everything, I asked them if there exists a hierarchy of colors that sorts us out in society. The blue guy said, yes, he immediately thinks of gold and silver as for the rich. Maybe the blue color is on a much higher spectrum than the green one. In contrast, the green guy has reservations about the hierarchy. He thinks that it's just an illusion. So I think the Pintadis activities somehow succeed. It somehow succeeds in opening the participants to the realities of different social classes if the processing is done well. Somehow, because I believe there is much more to improve. I think the participants creatively explore the spaces since they have discovered something about themselves by navigating their usual shopping uh, uh, activity. If the activity is done with friends, I think they will be more emotionally connected to the spaces and the process itself. Yet cognitive engagement will only occur if there is a prior reflective activity to set the learning atmosphere. So what is more, most remarkable to me about their self-discovery is the moment they realize how they look at things, and their buying habits, and then compare it to their peers. 
I think that's a very powerful moment for them. Overall, I think the project works, but needs some refinement on the aspect of processing to focus more on unraveling our learned biases and having a thematic type of questioning could elicit clear outcomes and focus reflections from the participants. Thank you very much.